Good morning friends, welcome once again to our channel. Today I want to show you something interesting about how we work here at my cyber cafe. We do our cyber in a market called Luak. Luak is in Siaya County. And uh, there is one problem with uh, doing business around here, especially when your business needs electricity. The problem is you will always have power cuts. And so it is uh, quite a menace. And around here you just have to make do with some um, a backup kind of power. And so here what we do is we do with solar. So today I'm going to show you the setup we have. It's a very simple setup. Actually, I can promise you with uh, about 10,000 or less, that is Kenyan shillings, you'll be able to do a similar thing to what I have. So let's get in. Uh, let me turn over the camera so that we can see the setup I have. Now friends, as you can see, this is my makeshift power room. It's just a section of uh, my shop, one of the places on my shelves. And here, as you can see, I have my one of my small printers, an Epson L382. Down here, again, I have another Epson 3110. And uh, over here, if you can notice, I have an inverter, just a small one that is a 300 watt inverter. Above it, on top of it, we have an Ico solar charge controller. Again, an inexpensive one, a cheap one. And then over here, do the guys will understand what I'm pointing at? That is a battery a small battery a 12 volt battery the, the one that you put in your motorbike now as you can see around here i also have my wi-fi equipment so i have a microtik rb2011 and down here is our airtel 5g router and this is the power bank that comes with the airtel 5g router and uh, right now I have uh, spliced into the wire that would go from it to the Airtel router so that it can power both the Airtel router and the Microtik router. That is a story for another video. I'll uh, explain why I have the two of them, but that's a story for another video. Today, we want to know how we do our business here whenever there is a blackout. Now, we have already mounted our solar panel on the roof and because the panel is on the roof I'll only show you the cable that comes from it and there it is and again I've used the connector here <coughs> so that it is easy to disconnect the panel in case I want to do any maintenance now that connector there is just a simple connector that you would find on a power cable the PC power cables especially the ones you know called the back-to-back -back cables so that that makes the disconnection easy now once the power comes from the power the, the solar on the, the panel on the roof you can see my two wires the blue one and the brown one the brown one going to the plus terminal for the solar panel and the blue one to the negative terminal for the solar panel over there the next one we have the terminals for the battery and i have two connections on it i have the battery wires as well as the inverter wires. So my inverter positive and the battery positive are both connected to the positive terminal there. And the inverter negative and the battery negative are connected to the negative terminal there. And so the solar charge controller ensures that the battery is not overcharged and it is not over discharged. So right here, I have my inverter you can see you can switch it on and the green power comes on right now i believe there is no load and so as you can see it's cycling between green and red but it uh, stabilizes when you load it you realize that it becomes stable on green now again being a small and cheap inverter some of them come with uh, uh, the upper voltage limit being a bit low so that when the battery is full 
you cannot really turn it on it it indicates red to mean the battery is over voltage there is a higher voltage that than one it what it can work with and so with that if that happens what i usually do is i disconnect my solar so that i'm only using the power that is already in the battery so let me do that and then we'll get back now there we are and uh, after disconnecting the solar so that it is no longer charging as you can see my battery level indicator is still green to mean the battery is uh, almost full 100 percent and you can now see my inverter is stable on green now whenever we have a power cut right around here most of our clients would come in for the simple jobs like photocopy and uh, maybe printing of pdfs printing of some notes here and there and so provided our printer can do it and this is a three in one it can also photocopy provided we can power our printer and we can power our laptop and there it is provided we can power those two then our job or our business continues uninterrupted and so normally i would have my laptop always charged up and then my printer is uh, what i'll now connect to my inverter so i'll show you how i do that i'll unplug my the, the printer's plug from my extension and then i will plug it into the inverter directly once i plug it in and the inverter is already on i can now come and turn my printer on and as you can see the printer goes through the power on cycle and once it is on we can proceed with our work so there it is it is already on and i'll demonstrate by doing a copy so with me here i have a paper this is a <clears throat> an exam paper that i gave to one of my students around here by the way i also do packages i also teach packages so that's a simple paper i gave to a student and we can photocopy it assuming a client has come in requesting for photocopy and so as usual press the black and white and the job is done so there it is that is how we survive around here we do not have to close because that uh, there is no power and you can see quite inexpensive equipment i got the battery for 800 shillings kenyan shillings that is right about uh, five six dollars and i got the charge controller from a friend actually he was uh, not using it but if you go to buy it i'm sure you can get it for around 1500 shillings that is about ten dollars the inverter was also a cheap one i got it for two thousand shillings that is around uh, fifteen dollars right there and then the solar panel i got it quite a number of years ago for around six thousand shillings which is about forty dollars so forty dollars plus five dollars that is 45 plus around ten dollars that is 55 plus 15 dollars that's around around 70 dollars total so with such an inexpensive system you can still continue with your business even when there is no electricity so that is it i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions about the system please put them in the comment section below and if you have any question let's discuss in the comment section and i'll see you on another video